All right, so starting today, we're moving into some new topics. And one of the things that's going to consume us for the rest of the semester is this idea of an algorithm, sort of developing algorithms, which we've been doing already, but also analyzing these algorithms, describing them, understanding their behavior. Um, and when we talk about algorithm analysis, typically what we're discussing or the way that we're going to treat it in this class. Now, I want to point out, this is a topic that you will hear about again and again and again. If you go on in our program, you'll do much more of this in 173 and 128. You'll do a lot more in 225. You'll do more in 374. And in many of your other courses, this is a common theme of computer science because algorithms are the core conceptual concern of computer science. So we spend a lot of time learning to program in this class, which is super important in a way in which you can build your creations and change the world. But we also do care about how things work, right? If you think about what is the conceptual core of computer science, it is understanding ways of solving problems, developing ways of solving problems. And the term we use for that is algorithm. So we're going to talk about kind of what makes up an algorithm. And then we're going to also start discussing what, you know, are the ways in which we can determine how much, how many resources an algorithm is going to consume. So this idea of algorithm analysis. When we analyze algorithms, typically interested in, in a couple of different things. Our primary interest in this class is going to be in what's called runtime. How many steps or how many computer cycles or instructions or whatever does it take the algorithm to, uh, to do some amount of work, right? Or to solve the problem. Um, and also, how, what is the relationship between the size of the problem and the number of steps that it takes? Because there's some algorithms for that which, so pretty much any algorithm on a small problem will run quickly. The question is, what happens when that problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger? You know, how much time does it take? Because there are some algorithms that very quickly get to the point where, you know, you'd have to wait for weeks or weeks or weeks or months. And in many, there are certain things in our society that are predicated on that being true. So, uh, you know, a great deal of computer security is predicated on the idea that it takes a long, long time to solve certain problems. And so if I encrypt the data in a certain way, it's not to say that there's an algorithm that can decrypt the data. But if the algorithm takes a thousand years to run, you know, even if the NSA took all of their super powerful computers and ran this algorithm just to decrypt your message that you exchanged over Snapchat or whatever, um, it would take them a thousand years. That's not super useful. By the time they're done decrypting that message, I mean, obviously they want to do other things too, but by the time they're done decrypting that message, it's not, that information is not very useful. So the idea of problems being hard is actually really important to certain computer science applications. If we tomorrow found a way to decrypt messages extremely quickly, if we found some hole in some of these security systems, the world would change overnight. You would hear about it. There'd probably be you know, a, a huge problem in our entire you know, civilization because suddenly like everybody's secrets would be available to anybody, right? So there are ways in which the hardness of certain problems is fundamentally important to society at this point, which is one of the ways in which you know computer science has really woven its way into our lives, right? So we'll talk about this. We're going to talk about algorithms. We're going to talk about how long they take to run. The other resource we'll think about in passing at a few points is memory. How much computer memory? So your computer has a certain amount of space that it can use to store data while a program is running. If it runs out of that space, we have a problem. And so certain algorithms store a lot of data along the way. And we'll talk about, you know, certain the, that property of algorithms as well. But our main concern is how long algorithms take to run, depending on the size of the problem. Again, any algorithm solves a small problem quickly, but big problems, as the problem gets bigger, the relationship between the size of the problem and how long it takes is important. The, the terminology we're going to use to describe this, and, you know, this is an intro course, and our uh, introduction into these topics is very, very high level. We are not going to go into detail. We're not going to do any proofs. We're not going to bring any complex math into the equation. Um, we're going to essentially look at programmatic features of various algorithms and talk about sort of how they affect how long it takes to solve problems. And when we talk about how long it takes an algorithm to solve a problem, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into what's called a complexity category. So this is sometimes known as big O notation, different notations. For, and, and the notation is really to indicate the relationship between how big the problem is and how long it takes the algorithm to run. 
And we'll talk about these in more detail one by one, the ones that we expect you to understand. So for example, there are some algorithms where as the problem gets bigger, the algorithm takes more and more time in this, at the same rate as the problem gets bigger. So if I make the problem twice as big, the algorithm takes twice as long. If I make the problem 10 times as big, the algorithm takes 10 times as long. That's a particular complexity category that sometimes we refer to as ON because there's a linear relationship between the size of the problem and how long it takes the algorithm to run. On the other hand, I have some algorithms when, that when I make the problem twice as big, the algorithm takes four times as long. And when I make the problem 10 times larger, the algorithm takes 100 times as long. So that's a different category. Right? We're going to talk about both of those categories. And there are some that even grow faster. Right? There are some that grow as like the factorial of the size of the problem, which is like a vertical line. So we'll look at graphs. We'll talk about these. We're going to indicate exactly which ones you need to know. And we're going to point out the features of code and certain problems that put them into these various complexity categories. But this is entirely the level on which we're going to operate. We're going to talk about runtime performance, primarily of algorithms, and we're going to focus on understanding the relationship between the algorithm's inputs and how long it takes to complete the task.